Please welcome Patrick Flynn. What we choose to create says a lot about who we are and what we value. And we're in the midst of creating something huge. Just how big is it? What is it? And what big story does it tell about us? One we'd be proud of or not? I'm going to do something dangerous. Take out your cell phones. Really. What was the last thing you got? Was it a text, an email, app notification? What was it? Email, text, OK. Thank you. Close your eyes. Imagine that's the last information you receive. Some time goes by, so you ask your neighbor. Same thing for them, and they have a different carrier. Weird, maybe a dead zone. You go outside to check, no cell signal and no Wi-Fi. The taxi outside says the outage is citywide. You decide to get to the airport, and the place is chaos. Security teams can't get an updated no-fly list. Ground crews can't get maintenance histories. The internet in the airport in this city and every connecting city, it seems, is down. You can open your eyes. How much cash do you have on you right now? Because credit cards and ATMs don't work. How long is this going to last? How am I going to access TED Talks? <laughs> what caused the outage, or who? Is my baby OK? I've got your attention now. Making this giant thing we call the internet more environmentally friendly has my complete attention. It keeps me up at night. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've made, the stories it might tell about us, and why the time for action is now. The internet touches more of our lives than we realize, in the background everywhere while we go through our daily routines. The internet is our single, species-wide central nervous system, sensing, transmitting, processing, and storing information, a way to deliver data from Dayton to New Delhi in an instant, communicating, conducting commerce, and keeping ourselves safe and secure. With our devices and sensors, we're always adding new nerve endings. That device in your pocket, a 4G network carries 50 megabits per second. 50 million zeros and ones per second. Imagine it. As many zeros and ones as there are people in Ohio and each of Ohio's surrounding states traveling to each phone each second. Unbelievable. And each phone is connected, not by anything solid, but an electromagnetic signal is just as real a connection as a copper cable. One data machine. A data explosion. 90% of our information was made in the last two years. And it lives in and gets put to work in our data centers. Data centers are the brains of this species-wide central nervous system scattered around the world big and small, housing industrial-grade computers called servers. Data centers are the information factories transforming electrons into zeros and ones to load websites and price plane tickets. With a web of networking equipment and fiber optic cables, our data centers are connected to each other, to our mobile devices, to our power plants, aircraft carriers, and deep space satellites. As far as we ever send anything into space, as big as we ever build anything here on Earth or elsewhere, we will tether it to and wrap it in this web of interconnected information machinery. The information machine is the biggest thing mankind will ever build. Think about that. The biggest thing we will ever build. 
I spend my days thinking about that and thinking about building it responsibly. Could we do a better job? Because to me, big is terrifying. It makes me sick to my stomach with worry. Big means huge quantities of natural resources to build and operate unprecedented implications for climate change and our ecosystems, all depending on whether we get it right or wrong. The information machine currently consumes more electricity than all but two countries on Earth. A single data center can consume as much electricity as the rest of the city it's in. Energy and materials going into this machine, it's immense. Water usage, carbon emissions, and it's growing. And that's just a sense of some of the direct impacts. What about the unintended consequences? That's the scariest stuff. What do I mean by that? Well, the national highway system is another big thing we built. How did we do with that? In many ways, the highways and the internet are alike. Last century, highways were instrumental in connecting us to one another and strengthening the economy. We all know the resources needed to design and construct it were large, but its unintended consequences are larger, and we still experience them today. Highways happen to lead to traffic, smog, sprawl, and the loss of community. And if a new highway took people past your town, it probably took their business with it. Would we build our transportation system the same way if we could redo it? When our children look back on the information machine and the information system we're building right now, what will they think of it? The stakes have never been bigger. At this size, planetary scale impacts, positive or negative, aren't likely, they're absolutely certain. We can't get this wrong and fix it a half century from now. I hope we build this machine smarter. I hope it tells a story about the best of who we are. And there is hope, because unlike past mega projects, this one can process information and have morals. We can create its behavior. Can a machine have morals? Can a machine have values? They already do. Picture a factory floor 100 years ago. The production equipment didn't have any means of reaction or decision. It wouldn't stop if a life were in danger or if pollution were getting problematic. It couldn't detect fire, let alone suppress it. Our early machines were brutal and built for unrelenting production. We didn't know better. Over time, that changed. Today's internet-connected factories, filled with sensors and digital controls, detect problems imperceptible to humans and automatically react to protect life, the environment, and property. Does a factory floor that's designed to stop if your life is in danger have more morality than the one that prioritizes continuous production and nothing else? I think it does. We've created digital morals in our control and automation logic and embedded that into our machines. They now have reflexes that mirror some of our values. They react how we would. The internet is allowing us to make more and more of our machines ever more moral. Problem is, the data centers, clean and bright, may look different than the factory floor from 100 years ago, but they sure act the same. Unresponsive, unrelenting juggernauts. Consider this. In a given data center, 20 to 30% of the servers are comatose, consuming space and energy and not delivering any useful work not on standby or reserve, but rather forgotten altogether, like a factory machine thumping and churning away without any materials coming into it. No information's coming or going, but the disks are spinning and the fans are on. 20 to 30 percent. That's like one out of four. 
Imagine getting kicked off the plane because they told you every fourth seat had to fly empty. To me, there's something about being that wasteful that doesn't feel right. Data center inefficiency is the greatest irony of our time. After all, it's the data center's insights that keep the planes packed with passengers flying fuel efficient routes. Data centers are streamlining and driving efficiency in almost every aspect of modern life, but not to themselves. We can have them process any information. We can have them behave any way we'd like. What instructions should we give? What if a server were moral? I'd start by having it send a message if it thinks it's been forgotten. And those multi-megawatt data centers, instead of churning away, could they be responsive, symbiotic even? What if a data center knew the utility was under strain and reacted instantly, stopping some production and averting a citywide outage? Better yet, what if load wasn't stopped, but simply shifted to a neighboring grid that had excess capacity? After all, it's really just one machine. It's possible today to move our demand for digital work at near the speed of light. It's a form of energy demand unlike anything we've ever seen in human history. Liquid. Currency brought liquidity to commerce. The internet brings liquidity to electricity. Move load where systems are more reliable or efficient or follow the sun. An information machine whose production is in sync with our solar panels moving around the world to be 100% powered by renewable energy, following the sun, elegant, intelligent, and sustainable. And just one example, how would you have it behave? As we create digital behavior, we distance ourselves and relinquish control. My car hits the brakes on its own. My thermostat knows I'm out of town. One day, the information machine is already starting to take action, and it's getting exponentially more sophisticated. One day, it may look to us like a child looking to its parents to learn appropriate behavior, but it's not going to ask for a focus group or conduct interviews. It's going to look for the lessons embedded in how we've designed it, because what we create says a lot about who we are and what we value. If it looked at itself today, it might see lessons like consume whatever resources you need and don't worry about waste, or react swiftly to anything unfamiliar to maintain operation, whether a dip in voltage or an unauthorized visitor. And since data centers are some of the most sterile places on the planet, it might conclude that even we think life is a threat to its continued operation. Are those the lessons we want to give the biggest thing we'll ever build? Pretty scary, right? And yet it might also observe that we've created incredible tools to advance knowledge, productivity, and our level of connectedness, that we're ingenious inventors, and apparently we're obsessed with cats. that we value elegance in design and doing more with less, and we dream big to overcome the impossible. I love those attributes. How about more of those? You don't need to understand the technology of the internet to improve it or to feel compelled to. This is mankind's magnum opus. You're a stakeholder. And your company doesn't need to be in the software industry to be a software company. How do you think you do everything from managing customers to processing payments? Your company is a software company. So raise your voice. Whatever industry you're in and whatever department, ask the people who know your software if the data center that supports it is sustainable. We can create a groundswell of demand for a sustainable internet. And to the builders and designers, policymakers and technologists, stay ahead of that demand. Build it beautifully with a holistic long-term view, thinking about direct impacts and unintended consequences. Have its behavior match our morals. 
That way, as the information machine, the biggest thing mankind will ever build, continues to underpin and empower our lives, mostly out of view and often taken for granted, we can rest assured that we've built it to behave in a way we can be proud of. Our biggest creation tells our biggest story. Thank you.